Started. So, um, I appreciate you showing up um, and uh, being here for this little lecture. Uh, it shouldn't be too long. Uh, hopefully, we'll be able to get through it and uh, go on there. If you do have any questions, obviously, you can use the chat feature that's here. And later on, uh, hopefully, I will get this put up on YouTube. So obviously, people are more than welcome there to go ahead and put comments down below. So basically, this is about overcoming headaches and neck pain and just general, like, natural types of strategies in order to correct problems with forward head posture and that are causing issues with both headaches and neck pain. So first thing is about me, and this is basically a little bit of info. Um, I am a board certified chiropractic neurologist. I have over 900 hours in postgraduate education when it comes to neurology. Uh, I also have certification and a specialty in sports medicine. Uh, I have a whole bunch of other certifications and things go on and on and on. I've been voted best at Toledo five different times. And while not currently, I am also a instructor at, uh, at Owens and I teach in anatomy and physiology. Uh, this semester, fortunately, I have it off. So that is a good thing. So basically the general idea is uh, when it comes to this lecture, we're gonna be talking mostly about posture. Okay. And the general idea is that when it comes down to it is that, you know, being a chiropractor, I'm obviously a expert in posture. Um, that is one of the problems that we have that is an issue in general in society. But when it comes to pain and other issues, uh, there's usually a couple different ways that you can look at pain and where things are coming from. There's the general kind of medical model that um, deals with uh, making things actually like people actually getting you know ill or sick or whatever before you actually start to try to treat it and then there's the general idea of prevention obviously that takes on a little bit of a different kind of a meeting with what we have going on now with the coronavirus and everything else but that is a, a general type of a rule people usually don't try to prevent heart disease they usually treat it after it's actually started up so the the way that we when we talk about pain and suffering from the standpoint of posture is making sure that you're working on posture and issues related to posture before you actually end up having a problem with pain that you could get from the, the posture itself. So the general idea is, is that why do you have to wait until you have pain and that you're suffering? The idea is to try to help fix your posture in order to actually prevent it in the first place. So the the general kind of thing that is a good try, kind of a deal and again not talking about the issues with the virus but in general if you wanted to talk about uh, imagine that you had like a crystal ball and that you were trying to imagine what it is that your future looks like again are you healthy is your family healthy um again what kind of things do you need to do to accomplish that type of a vision um Obviously with the virus is one different things, but if you're talking about in general over that period of time, um, you know, in order to be healthy and, and be full of life, um, in order to, you know, if you continue to think about that type of an image, then basically there's certain action steps that you need to accomplish it. So making sure that you're doing all the things that people know that they should be doing and that they're probably not doing. Um, there's obviously issues with nutrition and other kinds of problems. Uh, that many, many people have, the lack of exercise and activity, things along those lines, you know, posture ends up being one of those things. So it, it's just one thing to kind of like take into account when it comes to accomplishing that type of a vision. So, you know, if you are in pain, that's kind of a different kind of a story. Um, it, if you do have headaches and splitting headaches and other kinds of stuff like that, then that tension that you can get that comes from your eyes or the back of your head or any of that other kind of stuff. It, it's not, it's not one of those things that you can go from one end of the spectrum to the other. Most of the time when people are in that bad kind of pain, it ends up seeming a lot more difficult in order to actually get to the point where the people you know, don't have pain. It's, you know, especially if you've had it for a long time, as many, many people do. Um, it's, 
you know, easier to relax when you have a headache. It, you know, from the standpoint of, in many cases, that people don't feel like doing anything. They don't want to get up. They don't want to do exercises. They don't want to do other kinds of stuff, you know, because they can't necessarily enjoy things anyway because they have a headache. So there's just a couple of stories or a little story here about somebody. And obviously names are um, changed to protect the innocent. And the pictures that, we, um, that we're going to show are other types of pictures to demonstrate what it is that I'm talking about. So there's many different patients that we have that come in that have different issues with headaches. Headaches are super, super common. And it's one of the things that when people talk about chiropractic, most of the time people think of chiropractors as being somebody that would treat a, uh, a low back type of patient. But you know, and that there is a lot of research when it comes to that, don't get me wrong. But when it comes to chiropractic adjustments and other kinds of things, again, neck pain and headaches are the second most amount of research that we have on things that we can help. So we get a lot of people that have headaches and neck pain and migraines and all kinds of different combinations of stuff. So we had a, a patient of ours and we'll call her Anna. She was about 57 years old when she started coming in. Uh, she worked retail and you know, she's a wife, she's a mom, both kids are off in college, but she'd been suffering with headaches for her entire life, basically as long as she could remember, basically back into her teens at the very least. Um, and she just, like most people, she just started to live with the pain. Um, she would have, um, you know, pain most of the time, sometimes, you know, maybe once a month, twice a month, that regular headache would switch and it would become a migraine. And when the migraine would happen, she would end up having to be two, three days, you know, by herself, you know, in a dark room, she could drink water, but she would get nauseous at the thought of food. She, and she just had migraines all the time and the amount of lost time from work and other kinds of stuff end up being obviously problematic. Um, when she was about 55 or so, she started having pain that was shooting down her arm. You know, obviously she's getting older and she would just think that that was just something that happened. It was part of getting older and that was just it, even though that's not really part of the aging process. So again, she's working in retail. She has the shooting pain going down her arm. She couldn't really hold on to stuff. She was dropping things. She couldn't concentrate. She didn't have a lot of, there wasn't a lot of outlet for it. She would try Advil and you know ibuprofen and other kinds of things in order to try to decrease the amount of pain. But again, it didn't really change it. She knew she needed help. Um, you know, it was affecting her marriage. Uh, basically her husband, you know, was uh, not necessarily super supportive. He would roll at her eye, or roll his eyes when she would say that she wasn't feeling well. She didn't want to feel weak around him. She was trying to take care of everybody that was, else that was around her. So obviously it's one of those kind of things where a bunch of different stuff was piling up. And while this next picture is not her specifically, it demonstrates generally the idea. So when you look at this and you know, I, I would like to blow this picture up and I have another one that's over here um, in, let me see if I can actually like, let me see. So I'm gonna get a laser pointer here. So you can see over here in this picture, we're gonna bring that picture in in a second so that we can actually see what, uh, another view of what good posture and bad posture looks like. But when you take a look at uh, posture, again, one of the things that you can do is to try to take a look at someone's posture and see what the, the posture actually is. In our office, we don't have the gritting type of a system. And I don't necessarily take pictures of people always right away, even though it can be a very good thing in order to show people where they actually are um, from the standpoint compared to normal, but it's not something that I do on a regular basis. It, it, sometimes it can be used as kind of like a, a selling kind of gimmicky type of a thing. And that's not something that I want to do in my office, but posture is important. And it's something that it, it, it's important to take a look at where, um, where people stand, like literally. So this is another example of posture that's here. And again, this would be the, the differences back and forth between what proper posture would be and what this woman's posture is here. Again, notice how her weight is all in front of this green line. This is from kind of like the middle point where your weight should be. And all of these different dots that are here 
all of those dots should all be in the same line as we go back. Again, notice the spine here will curve back and forth, but the general points that you have, like the, the hip bones as they sit in here, the midpoint here of the neck, and basically like the, the ear holes when you're looking at somebody from the side, everything should basically line up. Again, the head should be level. Again, it shouldn't be jutting out forward. Granted, in this picture, she looks like she's looking down a little bit. Your head should not be having this angle that's here where it's coming forward like that. Again, when you're looking at someone from the front, again, the feet should be pointed forward and the weight distribution shouldn't be you know, different from side to side. So this is another example that you can end up having here. Um, again, you have the different points. Again, one shoulder can be higher than the other and other kinds of stuff. These pictures would be uh, pictures of what somebody would look like in kind of a before and after kind of a thing, right? Again, it's not horrible here um, in the front on, on either of these pictures. Again, it could be a little bit better in through here, but when it comes to the, the side picture here, again, you can see the knees are more over the midpoint of the foot. Um, again, the point of the hips is back a little bit more, and the rest of this is actually in much better alignment in comparison. Again, she is looking forward here in this example, and she does have a look, still a little bit of forward head posture. But again, these are all different things that are going to contribute to someone having problems. Um, again, you can get a person just with changing some of the issues with the person's posture and helping to fix some of this that can help get rid of headaches in and of itself but you can also help get rid of some of those problems with pain shooting down into the arms and other kinds of issues along those lines so let's just take a look at a little bit of a bigger picture of uh, of somebody else Again, we don't have the lines that are coming up here, but again, you can see the way that the body is sloping and the way that people can end up changing their posture. When you look here at this point, which is not exactly in the mid part of the foot, it's a little bit further back. You look at this point here and everything should be lined all the way up. And notice that when you look at that point that her upper body is really, really rounded in through here and she's actually leaning back a decent amount. Whereas on this view, basically this is everything lined up pretty much exactly where it should be. The knees are basically right in the center. The hips are right in the center. This point, the lower part here of the neck is pretty much right where it's supposed to be. And then you end up having the ear holes pretty much all in line. When you don't have that and when you have things that are basically not in the right positions, uh, again, it leads to a, an issue with postural distortion. In this position, it's called a number of different things. It depends on how technical that you want to get with it. But this kind of posture that's over in through here, this is going to be considered a forward head posture where, again, the ear is way ahead of the shoulders. You can also see on this view is that the shoulder is kind of rounded and protruding forward a little bit, where in this view, her shoulders are pulled back more. Um, where more where they should be. Again, this is considered to be a forward type of head posture. The other thing that people can call this is called upper crossed syndrome. And you know, there's a bunch of different information that's out there, but when it comes down to it, again, this is something that uh, can lead to a lot of different issues. When you just talk about from the belly button up, when you talk about the shoulders themselves, the upper back, the neck, headaches. It can also be related to issues with TMJ. All of these different things can, can be interrelated with having problems with forward head posture. And even then, you even talk about people that have problems with their low back. People can have low back pain because their head is too far forward and that actually helps to load up some of the muscles in the low back because they are contracting in order to hold it in the position where it's supposed to be. Again, usually that's not going to be the main thing or the only thing. There's usually other issues that get associated with that, but there's a lot of different things that can happen with people that have this forward head posture. So let's look a little bit more at forward head posture here. So again, this ear being way forward in front of the, the shoulder. And again, this is a little bit exaggerated when it comes down to it. But that is the general idea of what happens with upper cross syndrome and forward head posture. And again, this is one of those things where when you get your head forward into that position, again, there's a lot of different compression that happens with the muscles in the neck. There's tightness that happens with the muscles in the neck that actually will 
hold things into the right position. Um, the, uh, the movement of the spine is compromised. There's problems with how the spine moves can all be altered when someone does that. Again, muscles in the back of the neck can get too tight. Certain other muscles in the front that are a little bit larger can get tight as well. Other muscles that should be working can be too weak and you can rely on other muscles to, to do things. So the, the body in general is in, in harmony and that's the way that it should be. You should have balancing from side to side where you shouldn't have more tension on one side of the body than the other. And again, that goes between the left and the right, but it also goes between the front and the back. So again, a lot of times people end up having problems with posture and that can cause an issue with um, leading to pain directly. So again, if you can help to fix that posture, again, that can be one of the major issues with helping to get somebody out of pain. So when it comes down to it, you know, when it comes to forward head posture, in and of itself, it doesn't always necessarily cause pain, but you're talking about a problem with somebody that has this over a long period of time. Again, the, the idea is, is that if you want to think of the, the different postural images, is that just imagine that the head itself weighs around 10 to 12 pounds, right? So if the head weighs about 10 to 12 pounds, there's a general type of a rule that when someone moves their head forward about an inch, that just the movement of a little bit of just an inch is enough to actually add an additional 10 pounds of, of muscular tension to what you're trying to, to hold on to. So you don't have a lot of tension when the head is just over in, in its normal position. But if you move the head forward about an inch compared to where it should be, your muscles have to contract a little bit harder in order to hold it in position. And for every inch that it moves forward, it adds another 10 pounds. So just imagine, you know, something that is about six inches forward from where it should be, which is completely possible and happens all the time with people, their body ends up holding that weight there of basically 60 pounds of weight out in front of yourself. So there's two different ways that you can look at it. Imagine that you were to try to take a weight like a kettlebell or, or something like even like a jug of milk or something like that. It's not exactly 10 pounds for a jug of milk, but if you can just imagine that you're holding something in close to your body and if it's up against your chest or if you're holding it in tight up against there, then it's not necessarily going to weigh a whole heck of a lot. But as you start to push it out away from your body and if you were to extend your arms all the way, even if you're talking about just the jug of milk, there's going to be a certain amount of time that you can hold that weight out there before your body starts to get tired and before your arm starts to get sore and everything starts to ache. Again, it depends on how strong you are and everything else on whether or not that, it, that bothers you, but it's gonna be harder to hold it out in front of you than what it would be just holding it up against your body, right? Or even holding it overhead and just balancing something overhead for a lot of people is gonna be a lot easier than just trying to hold something out front. So those muscles in the back of your neck, over time, they can get tighter and tighter. Again, they can do, they, they can ache more and more just by holding that weight in, in the wrong kind of a position. So, um, you know, again, this could be something that, you know, if you're in front of me, it's a little bit easier to kind of, uh, to, to show you exactly what it feels like because you can actually move somebody into that kind of a position, but you can actually feel tension disappear when you pull someone's head back into the right kind of position, the, the trapezius muscle, so if, you know, a lot of people don't know where anatomy is as much as what they should. So the shoulder joint is actually over in through here, but people will talk about their shoulders being all of this in through here. This area is basically known as the trapezius, and that muscle is one of those muscles that has the tendency to get really, really tight in people. One of the things that can happen is, is that somebody that ends up having issues with forward head posture, usually their trapezius muscle and the levator scapula, which is another muscle back here, ends up getting really, really tight and it can add trigger points in it. Those little knots that you can get in the muscles. Just by taking someone and pulling their head back into the right position and having them move their shoulders back and down into the position that they should, should get, you can actually feel the tension in through here disappear. You can, or in, maybe not disappear because a person might be having issues 
but you can feel a noticeable difference in their posture and the tension in the muscle when they have bad posture versus when they have better posture and when they're pulling things back to where they should be. Again, a lot of times people have a hard time holding it there because they have issues with the strength of some of these muscles. But again, it ends up being the muscles are working all the time and you end up having that tightness and the soreness. And everything, again, headaches can be developed from it. Uh, pain that uh, is at the back of the neck, which again is one version of headaches that people can get. People can get headaches in the temporal part, like again on the sides, the temporal, uh, the temporalis muscle that's in the that's on the side as well, as well as pain that's in the front of the forehead and a general tension headache. the The neck has a inner relationship between the head. And there's a specific area of anatomy that's in the, the top part of the neck and the, the bottom part of the spinal cord where there ends up being a cross communication that happens between the two of them. So people can end up having a referred pain in their neck that they actually feel in their head. So making their neck better ends up making the headache go away. And then there ends up being other relationships as well where People that have tension headaches over long periods of time and headaches that are bad enough can switch and become a migraine in some people. So there's a lot of different stuff that can go on in between those. So looking at the next step, it's like when you're trying to figure out what to do to correct a forward head kind of posture, what's the right kind of thing? What do you need to do? Does somebody need a massage? Do they need painkillers? Do you need ibuprofen or Tylenol or Aleve or any of that? Should you use, ice? Should you use heat? Again, postural correction is going to be one of the things that's up there. Again, it depends on what the person's issue is and what exactly is going on. But the way that I look at this and the way that I explain it to patients most of the time is that there's basically, there's three different kind of things that, that I think make sense to do. I have people try to imagine one of those really, really tall towers, the ones that you can think of that have the guy wires attached to them. So the guy wires, you know, the little, um, the, the little, the, the large cables that are attached to it to make sure that something doesn't fall over. So when it comes down to it, if something is crooked and it's leaning off, you know what, we're going to just draw it just because I can, right? So you can see a little bit of this to the side. So if the pen, so with the pen here, if you have a, a, a tower that was leaning off to the side and you have guy wires that are attached on both sides over and through here, if you were looking at a tower that was leaning over to the side like this and you had a chiropractor and a physical therapist and a massage therapist that were looking at it, and I realize that this is a generality, so just bear with me. If the guy wires down and through here are are gonna be, as this thing is leaning over to the side, the massage therapist would typically look at this and would say that these guy wires on this side end up being a little bit too tight. So what we need to do is we need to get in here and we need to work out these different areas, loosen them up, and by loosening them up, that is going to allow this thing to then stand up straight. Again, as straight as I can draw here on my computer. Okay, so that's one of the different ways that you can end up having you know, a, a view like that. So by going through and by doing massage, that's one of the things that you can end up getting. The second thing would be is that a physical therapist would maybe look at this and say, okay, well, these muscles over here, they're too weak. And if these muscles are too weak, then we need to strengthen those muscles. And then when that happens, and then it's going to bring everything back up and back into alignment right? Chiropractors typically are going to take this and we're going to adjust it. So we're going to shove it back into the center, right? And I think that that's funny because it's kind of accurate. But the issue is, is that what it comes down to is that you, I, in my opinion, you need all three. You don't want to just do one because one of them isn't going to necessarily fix it. All three of them done together are going to do the job in order to get things back to where they need to be. And again, Ice is not going to be something that's going to fix the problem. Heat isn't going to be something that's going to fix the problem. Both of those things can help somebody that might be in acute pain, and it might depend on the person, and you might use ice. Some people might use heat, but everybody is going to be a little bit different between the two. Again, a painkiller is not going to be something that's going to fix it. It might make the pain go away for a little while. So somebody could take ibuprofen, and they could make their headache go away for a little bit, but they're probably going to get a headache in short, um, in a short amount of time. 
again, massage can be a wonderful thing. That's again, working in some of these areas in order to get them to loosen up. But again, if you don't have all three of those things together, again, specifically the exercises in order to help fix the posture, then you're going to end up having problems. There's a lot of things that it comes down to when it, when it comes to trying to fix one of these things. So you need to help to fix the posture in order for somebody to get better and actually make the pain go away and stay away. And that's the important thing. That's what we want is that we want the pain to be gone and to stay gone. Now, obviously, there, nobody knows why we end up having issues with um, people's posture and their neck and all that other kind of stuff. Well, obviously, we do. There's a, it's a modern day type of a thing. Obviously, when it comes down to it, we all have phones, pretty much all of us. We're all getting into this position. And again, this position of looking down at your phone, some people will call it text neck, but it's not just when you're using your phone. People will get in that same kind of a position when they are at their computer, when they're driving in their car, when they're sitting at their couch. So there's, it's not just here, but this is just like a classic kind of a thing. And text neck is a fantastic word for it, but there's multiple different kind of things that, that are interrelated to having this problem with your neck pain. So again, there's all these different stressors that are associated with it. So again, that cell phone is going to definitely be a problem. The iPads are going to be a problem, but it can also be a problem if somebody is studying or if somebody, you know, if you're a student and you're studying or if you're reading books, um, again, reading books and looking down at the book can cause the exact same kind of a position. So, you know, but the issue that changes it is that now because of the texting and because of the cell phone, people are on their cell phone from anywhere between two to four hours a day. And that's after they've been to work and been staring at a computer and having bad posture in that position, or if they're driving in their car and they had bad posture there. Again, you can, some of our phones will even go through and it'll tell you what your average screen time is. And then it'll tell you whether or not you're up or down during that week for what you are compared to your average. So that, that text neck or that forward head position or the, the upper cross syndrome, all of those different things are going to have things that are going to affect the way that your body works and the amount of pain that you end up having. So there's different ways that you can actually check your posture. Um, and again, I'm not telling you that you need to get rid of your cell phone and that this is something that you can't have and that kind of stuff. But the idea is, is that when it comes down to it, there's things that you can do to be mindful and, and pay attention to your posture. Um, you know, and I'm not talking about using technology of like something that wraps around the shoulders and pulls your shoulders back. In fact, I don't like those things because of the fact that people have the tendency to just kind of rest down on them. And when they rest down on them, the muscles that are in the front part of the chest, like in through here, have the tendency to get tighter and people will just kind of rest into that position and it ends up even making it a little bit tighter. It doesn't really pull it back and make you stretch. It actually will strengthen the muscles that bring the shoulders forward. So that's not a good thing. Um, but again, there's other kinds of things that you can do um, when, when it comes down to it. Again, this can be something that can lead to problems with issues with your upper back and with your neck and with headaches and with shoulder pain. Again, this position puts your shoulder in a position so that it makes it a lot easier for you to tear your rotator cuff or to get weakness in that rotator cuff. So there's multiple different problems that goes along with that. Um, so being able to hold things up, looking down with your eyes and not necessarily with your head is gonna have something that, that can change your life. And again, that's just something, it's about being aware. One of the things that I do like is that there are some things that will have different kind of devices, maybe that you might be able to put on the back of your neck here. And when you actually like slump down, it will give you an alert on your phone and then it'll tell you to pop itself back up or it'll beep or there's different examples of that. That's a different kind of a thing that makes you actually actively use the muscles that are in, the, in, in your back in order to help to fix your posture. Because again, it's better to actually fix it actively than it is to try to fix it passively. So again, when you talk about, um, you know, when in general with technology, this is one of the other things. Again, people right now are gonna be binging when it comes to all kinds of different shows on Netflix and other kinds of stuff. Again, this might be a position that some of them might be in. And you're not gonna be here when you're typing typically, 
but if you're looking at YouTube continually or different stuff like that, this can cause problems. Again, rounding of the shoulders, even though you're resting it on your hand, again, you're gonna be firing muscles in order to keep your head in that position. And if you don't have your workplace set up ergonomically, again, it's going to cause strain, especially if you're not taking rests you know, every half an hour or so in order to help get rid of um, you know, the, that, those poor habits. And again, some people might be seated like this and some people might have great posture when it comes to being at work, but then when they go home, then they don't necessarily have the best kind of posture that's there. So again, sitting here and laying on the couch, again, having you know, not great neck support that's here, falling asleep on the couch, maybe the couch is 10 years old. Again, all kinds of different stuff can contribute to problems with the cervical spine as well. Um, so again, how far forward is your neck when you're sitting? How far, how rounded are your shoulders when you're sitting? Um, and that, and again, the, the likelihood is, is that people that end up having more problems with rounding, like the person in the picture over and through here, the likelihood that that person has headaches or neck pain or shoulder pain is gonna be really, really high. But one of the things that you can do is that you can help to fix your posture. Again, if you can actually sit up, and there's gonna be some things in here that are gonna be great, some things you may not wanna do all the time. But again, uh, having uh, support for your hands, having um, the, the keyboard that's here and sitting up straight. Notice there's great posture here. This could actually be improved by having um, in a regular chair to have armrests and having your elbows resting on the armrests and maybe having the keyboard itself be a little bit lower. And some people, they're gonna do really, really well with having a ball and sitting on a ball. But again, having a ball and sitting on a ball is not gonna be for everybody. It's like, you know, the, those types of shoes that people have seen that are those Vibram five finger shoes where you can see people's toes, right? Um, you know, you, the individual toe parts that, you know, and it, when, when you look at, at, at those shoes. Again, those shoes can be good. I think that they're a little ridiculous, but that's all right. But those can be really, really good shoes for people, but you don't want to have somebody that ends up having foot problems and throw, those in, and throw somebody in those shoes because a person isn't going to be having an issue with, um, you know, the, the person isn't going to be doing well because their feet aren't strong enough in order to handle that. If somebody doesn't have good posture and you throw them onto a ball, it may not be a good outcome for them. So they need to make sure that they're actually like taking care of uh, what they need to take care of and doing it incrementally and not just jumping off into the deep end when they're not quite there yet. So some, again, helpful tips when you have it, again, avoid looking down. Make sure that the monitor is at the right height. The monitor shouldn't be down too low, it shouldn't be up too high. In fact, this monitor, I think that that could even be a little bit higher up than what it is right there. Um, one of the best things to do for workplace ergonomics is to actually just type that into your computer. And if you type in workplace ergonomics into your computer, Typically, and then you click on Google and you look at the images that are there, typically you can find a couple of decent images of what things should actually look like at your workplace. Um, so again, raising up the level of the computer to eye level, um, making sure that when you're sitting there that you're taking breaks. That again, if you're gonna be sitting for eight hours a day and 40 hours a week, you wanna make sure that you're in a good position. But you also wanna not be constantly sitting in the same spot. You have to get up and you have to move. Um, again, you can sometimes um, have a foot rest that's down here because again, that can change the way that the rest of the body is actually sitting. So other things that can be helpful is to make sure that you have a good pillow. Again, so many people have pillows that are either non-existent or they don't use one. And I personally don't think that that's a great idea, but some people will swear by it. But again, pillows are one of those kind of things that it can really change the way that your, that your body does it. Um, there are some pillows that I think that are better than others. Personally, in the office here, we have a ChiroFlow pillow that you actually fill up with water. 
and it, when the head rests on it, it comes up and it pushes up underneath the neck. Um, I slept with one of those pillows for a really, really long time. I think that those work a lot better than the ones that have holes in the center of them, um, you know, or the ones that are thick on one side and thin on the other that are memory foam. Um, there's multiple different types of pillows that are there, but it's something that you have to just try to find a pillow that really, really works for you and make sure that you're sleeping in the right type of a position. Because again, sleeping face down, typically that's twisting your neck and that's usually not going to be a good thing for people. Um, the pillow that I ended up switching to is that I have a, um, a, a regular shaped pillow that is filled with individual pieces of uh, Tempur-Pedic. So it's one of the more expensive type of pillows that's there, but again, it's something that I've liked. But again, it, it, everybody's a little bit different, but Again, making sure that you have a good pillow, that's one of the things to look at. And again, in general, like your mattress can also be something that, that can be an issue when it comes down to it as well. So again, you shouldn't be pushing your head up or down uh, when you're sleeping. Everything should be aligned when it comes to the spine. So, uh, you know, and the way to look at it is that when it comes to a pillow is that I think that it's an investment, just like a mattress is. Again, if you're going to be spending eight hours a night that's, you know, sitting there with your head on something, you don't want it to be something that's cheap that you got, you know, somewhere like a dollar store or something like that. You need to make sure that you spend a little bit uh, of money on one of those. So, it like, again, it depends on the person. So when it comes down to it, there's a, a few things to do uh, when it comes to getting to work. Again, you there's things about correcting the problem, again, fixing the posture, and again, re-educating people and making sure that people know about what kind of posture that they should have, and then corrective exercises for the muscles in order to help get things back to where they should be. So when it comes down to it, again, postural correction in and of itself is gonna, is gonna basically deal with getting the body in a good position. So in order to get the position that's back in through here that's shown on this, one of the ways that you can do it is you can actually stand up against a wall. And this is one of the easiest ways to do it. And again, without me having video on this one to really show you or having you in front of me so that we can kind of work it. Basically what you want is you want to have, you want to have a, a kind of a position where if you go back to this picture that's here, again, if you are standing so that your back is up against a wall, you want to have your head facing straight forward. You don't want to be looking down and you don't want to be looking up. You want to be looking with your head straight forward and your face basically facing straight ahead. And then basically you want to put your back up against the wall so that your shoulder and your upper back is touching the wall. And you want to basically do what we call chin retractions which that would mean in that case, again, it's not necessarily gonna work with somebody that's got a ponytail in because that's gonna get in your way. But if you have your back up against the wall, you wanna take your chin and tuck it backwards, straight backwards, almost like you were pressing it backwards with your fingers in order to have your head come up and touch the wall. That is what we call a, uh, a chin tuck or a neck retraction. And basically, that's one of the ways that you can work on it. And that's one of the most basic things that you can do. There's other things that's there. I actually have a, um, a treatment for upper cross syndrome that is listed on my uh, YouTube channel. So my YouTube channel is actually uh, something that, that has one that people have actually like viewed it a decent amount. And basically it shows something called Bruger's exercise. And I would encourage you when, when you get done with this to go and take a look at that YouTube channel so that you can see it because it has a chin tuck that's shown in it and you can actually see that chin coming backwards. You're also doing something with your arms at the same time in order to help to fix the posture on the upper back here and in the, um, and in the, uh, and in the chest. So the pec minor muscle has the tendency to get a little bit tight. And that's one of the things that can help to stretch this out while it strengthens the muscles in the upper back. And again, it's trying to loosen up the muscles in through here and strengthen the muscles in the front of the neck, not the larger muscles that can end up popping out in some people sometimes, but to strengthen some of the weaker muscles in order to get things more balanced. So again, keeping your eyes and your face staying 
level. And again, it's almost like, you know, like a, a, a chicken, like when it's walking where its head is gonna move back and forth, the head moves forward, the head moves backwards. And it's the forward, or it's the, I'm sorry, it is the backwards type of movement that happens with the head which is where you're gonna get that stretch there and it's gonna give you the benefit. That's one of the things that you can do. Again, the nice thing about that is that you can do that when you're sitting in a car, you can sit do that when you're sitting, um, you know, if you're waiting in line at the DMV for something. You know, there's multiple different places where you can do that exercise. I have the tendency to do that a lot when I'm flying on a plane because flying on a plane with your head forward or down or whatever. I had the tendency to get a little bit of neck issues when I'm going on a plane somewhere. So tucking that chin has the tendency to loosen up those muscles in the back of the neck. And again, you're trying to, to do pretty well with that. So there's other kinds of things that you can do when it comes down to it. Again, massaging muscles are, is not going to be something that's going to correct forward head posture, but it is something that you can do in order to, it's like, it's not gonna do it by itself, but it is something that you can give yourself a little bit of help with. So sometimes you can use other kinds of things. Sometimes using tennis balls to kind of push in through here on the shoulder can be a good thing. So if we look at the, this picture here, if you were pushing up against the wall and you had the tennis ball here, that can be something that can be a good thing as well. Um, there's other things that are called theracanes that you can get or other types of plastic canes where basically they're shaped where they have like a cane type of a thing. The one that we sell in our office basically looks something like this where it has a knob here and it has a knob here on either end. And you can use any of these different points in order to push in. So this would be something that if it was turned around, you can actually have it so that it's coming around and that it's you're grabbing it and then you're pulling down in this direction in order to actually like get into the muscles in the back of this. You can also use it to get into multiple different places. And those are things that you can typically get on Amazon. Um, you can also get those in our office, but the Theracanes end up working really, really well in order for somebody to do some of this myofascial release for themselves. So there's a lot of different things. And again, we don't want you to just, um, you know, just try to do this because this can be helpful, but we also want to make sure that you're going to be doing some things that are going to be related to um, trying to get yourself better. So another thing that's there is that we talked about some of the things that's here again, when it comes to postural correction, talked about the postural rehabilitation, again, doing some of those exercises. There's many, many more exercises that are associated with postural rehabilitation and corrective exercises. But one of the things that ends up being a huge part of helping to fix somebody is to help breaking up restrictions. So when it comes to manipulation, manipulation or spinal adjustments is going to be one of the things that can be extremely effective at helping to reduce neck pain. Again, migraines is part of it, but it also helps to reduce uh, many problems when it comes to uh, the neck just in general. So when it comes to uh, problems with regular headaches and with neck pain, again, spinal adjustments can be excellent. So there, there's even a study that we talk about when it comes to you know migraines specifically, where they talk about People that got adjustments improved during a four-week course of time. People that got uh, medication improved. But the thing that was great about the, the study was that it showed that people that ended up having spinal adjustments did better a couple of weeks afterwards than people that ended up having the medication. So if you take medication, you know, typically you do pretty good. But people can end up having rebound headaches. And as soon as you stop taking the medication, it doesn't really help. But with the adjustments, people continue to improve after that, those four weeks were up. So they continue to improve. And after eight weeks, they ended up basically doing uh, much better and have much better improvement. Whereas people that ended up being in the medication group ended up basically going back to where they were before the start of the study. So that's one thing. Another thing that somebody can do is do myofascial work. So again, we talked a little bit about massage. Massage is one of the things that is an issue. So working here in the back of the neck, 
Um, the back of the head is one thing, again, working in the back of the neck. And you can use your fingers, you can go to a massage therapist is gonna be one thing that it can be really, really good. Uh, another thing that is amazing is a technique that we do in our office that's called Graston technique. It looks a little bit barbaric, but it is, you know, especially on the neck and the shoulders, it usually actually feels fairly good. Um, you know, it's a little bit different when somebody has like uh, Achilles tendonitis or like plantar fasciitis that can be, um, that, that can get sore. But when you do it to a person's tolerance level, again, you can get a lot of improvement when it comes to this. So massage therapy is great. There's another technique called ART for active release technique that some providers uh, know how to do uh, in my office because I'm not technically trained in ART. I do something that's similar called pin and stretch. Uh, Graston technique, again, I'm the only certified provider in the Toledo area in Graston technique and I am a Graston technique specialist. Um, and I've been certified for over 10 years. Uh, when it comes to uh, other ones, there's other types of methods that you can use. Uh, there's stretching that you can do and teach people how to stretch, but also actively stretch them. Uh, and there's other types of techniques that are available as well. One of the other things that can be done is that there's another tool. I'd already talked about that, um, the Theracane that we have, but there's another types of tool that's out there that is called the Da Vinci tool that I recommend on a regular basis basis for patients. So this is a tool that is, you can find it for about 20 bucks on Amazon. It's basically made of plastic. There's one that's red and there's another one that's blue. The red one is a little bit softer. The blue one's a little bit harder. But basically you can switch this so that any of these are on the ground and you can have like the section that's here that's rounded to put it in the back of the head and you can move it down and you just basically rest your head on this. It, it's fantastic to do it. This is the one that most people will use. This is a little bit uh, where the ridges and stuff that are here. This one isn't quite as intense and this one is a lot more intense. So it just depends on the person and it depends on the, the issues that, that a person has when it, when it comes down to it. So again, uh, manual therapy and doing things in order to help to improve it, again, can be a wonderful type of thing in order to get somebody better. Um, and again, this is a fantastic thing to send somebody home with or have them go buy at home for them to be able to um, sell it or for them to be able to buy it and then have it at home so that they can help to treat some of their headaches um, at home on their own and release some of that tension. Again, therapeutic exercises are a fantastic thing to do. So again, there's range of motion exercises that you can do. There's the chin tuck that we talked about. You can actually add resistance to using that chin tuck. You can do it with your hands or sometimes you can use a band. You can even lay on your back and use, do that chin tuck exercise. There's the Brugger's exercise that I talked about in, that is in that YouTube video that, that we shot. Um, and then there's another, uh, there's another exercise called the bat wing. And we may just uh, go through and do that uh, uh, exercise and put that up on YouTube as well. There's stretching that you can do for the different types of muscles that are associated with it. And then in and of itself, the uh, exercises in order to work the muscles in between the shoulder blades can help to decrease pain. And again, there's other exercises to strengthen some of the muscles that are around the neck. All of those things can do a good job at helping to take care of people that end up having headaches. So again, just to kind of recap when it comes down to it, there's things that you can do for your forward head posture. Again, one of them is to start being more mindful of your posture while you're texting. Again, while you're sitting at your desk or if you're using a computer or while you're laying down on a pillow. Again, try to have a pillow that's a little bit more functional than it is fluffy. Uh, you want to support the neck in a nice neutral position. And when I say that, I mean the neck. I mean not just the head. So you shouldn't just have, if you're laying on your back, if this person was laying on their back, you don't want the pillow to just be supporting the head. You want it to come up underneath the neck and support the neck as well. Um, again, there's neck retraction exercises that you can do in order to help improve the fitness of the cervical spine. Uh, you can get in there and use a tennis ball or that Da Vinci tool or the Theracane. There's multiple different choices that are there. So hopefully when you're done here, you can basically 
uh, think a little bit differently about posture when it re is related to neck pain. Uh, don't end up like that patient. Again, somebody should try to get things taken care of sooner rather than later. Just because somebody has pain, it doesn't mean that you can't do something to get rid of it. Again, especially if you talk about like, you know, even kids, the number of teenagers that start off and they have migraines and other issues and stuff like that. And, you know, it's a 13 year old or a 14 year old girl. Uh, it, it happens a lot. Um, and sometimes parents don't realize that a, that a kid is in that much pain. So whether it is a kid or whether or not, you know, you're a 35 year old woman or a 65 year old guy, um, you know, all of those things are going to be, uh, things that you don't have to suffer with. So I would say uh, to give us a call, see if we can help you out. Um, hopefully that you have a little bit more uh, knowledge about posture and how it can affect neck pain. And um, again, this is one of those kind of things where, you know, it's not like, you know, it, it acts for some people, it's kind of like a diet that they've been putting off for several years, um, you know, procrastination is obviously not a good idea. You have to be um, active with trying to get yourself better. So one of the ways that you can actually do that, because again, I know that this is something that you're watching and we're not um, interacting with each other and I can't have you turn to the side and take a look at your posture and tell you what's off with it. But one of the things that you can do is you can actually take a picture of your posture whether or not it's having somebody do it for you, stand straight ahead, look straight ahead, don't look at the person or have them take it from you, like when you're from behind you, um, have you take a picture and have you take a look and see what it looks like. And again, the other is taking a picture from the side. So having you just look straight ahead like you would normally sit, don't try to like um, correct it, but just have somebody take a picture from your side. It, sometimes in the office, we have a mirror here that people can use in order to take a look. But even when you're just kind of turning your head to the side, it changes the way that your head looks when you actually are looking at yourself in a picture. So that's something that you can do is take a picture and you can even send it to me. And we can, uh, you know, maybe have a little bit of a conversation about uh, what's going on. And obviously you can come in and uh, take a look and we can try to get yourself fixed. So again, if you have any questions, obviously feel free to leave a comment. If you have any, anything down below when it comes to like anything in the chat, obviously you are more than welcome to uh, ask a question now, but if uh, nobody has a question again, I uh, appreciate it. Thanks for taking your time to come in and Watch this and I hope you have a good day and hope everybody stays nice and healthy.